Coming up next, we're back on the road again. This time, we're on Highway 260, just outside of Payson. If you've traveled this road recently, you know there's been a lot of construction up here. Coming up next, we'll show you what the Arizona Game and Fish Department is doing with the Department of Transportation to make this road safer for elk and for motorists. This popular road climbs the Mugion Rim through some prime elk habitat. The movement of the elk as they search for food, water, shelter, or open space can take them across the highway and into the path of oncoming traffic. Hitting an animal as big as an elk will do some serious damage to a vehicle and could prove fatal to the occupants as well as the elk. So the Arizona Game and Fish Department, working with the Department of Transportation, took a hard look at this wildlife road crossing issue during the recent redesign of Highway 260. Among other things, these ordinary box culverts were replaced by larger bridges, allowing wildlife to cross under the road. Video cameras were set up to record the elk's behavior to see if anything could be modified to make the crossings more usable to the animals. The goal was to allow wildlife the freedom to move, but keep that movement off the road. The project is several years old now. The cameras have shown that, for the most part, elk are using the underpasses, though some animals are on guard. Now, the study is moving ahead and looking at subtle ways to modify the bridge design and make them more appealing for wildlife to use the safe passages. One of the things that we've found through our video surveillance monitoring is that there's a dramatic difference in the use of the two underpasses here at Little Green Valley based on the structural characteristics of the two underpasses. What we found is we have nearly a threefold uh, difference in the number of animals that have gone through this underpass, which is more natural looking to the elk, versus the other underpass that has the concrete walls. The passage rate in this underpass averages about 75 percent. That means that about 75 percent of the total number of elk that approach this underpass walk right on through. At the other underpass, which is a little bit less friendly looking to the elk, only about half go through. That's a significant difference. So these two things combined have told us that the elk prefer a design of the underpasses similar to this. We took that information and applied it to a section of Highway 260 being built near Coles Ranch. That section included about 50,000 square feet of a very expensive concrete wall. And we worked with ADOT and the contractor and eliminated all of that wall so that we can maximize wildlife use. The bottom line is we're trying to get our best bang for the buck. And when we found that the walls appeared to be incompatible with achieving high wildlife use of the underpasses, uh, we decided to take it out. So that's a, an example of what we call the adaptive management aspect of our project. Where we're out here working with ADOT on a daily basis and then applying the information that we're gaining to make the underpasses and the various measures associated with the wildlife structures better. What we found on this section, the Preacher Canyon section, which was the first section that was completed back in 2001, is the accident rate has remained unchanged. The accident rate for this section of highway has been running about seven to eight accidents per year. But the thing that has been interesting is the traffic volume, the number of vehicles on average that cross on this highway has gone up 67 percent between pre-reconstruction and post-reconstruction. Okay. So the bottom line is, is that even though the accident rate has stayed the same, we've still done a good job of maintaining it. Otherwise, it could have gotten much worse. Another plan is to actually fence a section of highway and then come back and compare the accident rates. We're also trapping elk and fitting them with the latest satellite tracking collars. That way, we can go back and see how many times an elk has actually crossed the highway. On this section of highway, from the animals that we had collared in the first phase of our research, we had about 1,500 crossings by elk. So a pretty dramatic rate of crossings. We had one elk that crossed the highway 692 times and lived. She basically lived along the side of the highway. We're using this information in terms of where the animals cross mm -hmm. to then work with ADOT to determine where do we put the fencing. so that that fencing will serve as a funnel to guide the animals to these underpasses. What we're finding on the Christopher Creek section, which is the newest section that was opened in July, 
is that without the fencing to guide the animals through these underpasses, we were only looking at about an 11% success rate in terms of animals that came to the underpasses that would go through. Most of the animals would go up and over the top, or if they did come through the bridges, they would go through one set of bridges and up into the median and across the second set of lanes. So kind of through and up and over. Now take, for example, the section of highway near Christopher Creek. That was completed in July of 2004, before the fence went up. That year, there were 56 accidents involving elk. After the fence was completed, only one accident was reported. That's a very dramatic reduction. The fencing is, is indeed a very integral part to making the underpasses effective. Now on the Preacher Canyon section, we're working with ADOT to fence the entire section of highway. We've recognized that the accident rate hasn't changed over time, and we want to reduce that to virtually zero. Similar to what we've seen happen on the Christopher Creek section by fencing the priority areas. When we took a hard look at the data and crunched the numbers, some trends started to emerge. The highest number of accidents occur in October and November. October is the period when the animals are in the breeding season. They're moving around a lot, crossing the highway often. In November, we see animals migrate off the Mogollon Rim, so we have a big influx of migratory animals that come in that contribute to a higher incidence of accidents. Um, interestingly, um, our highest traffic occurs on the weekends. Obviously, people are driving this highway to get to the White Mountains. There's a lot of tourist-related traffic. And what we find is the accident rate is actually lower on the weekend. On those days when the traffic's real high, we see a lower incidence of accidents because the animals don't cross. There's so much traffic, they hold back. But then on Sunday and Monday, when the traffic drops off dramatically, we see the accident rates shoot up real high. And that's because the animals start crossing like crazy. So it's a little counterintuitive. We see more accidents when the traffic's lower. Um, and then what we've found is that most of the accidents occur, 55% in fact, occur about two hours after sunset. So the riskiest times to drive Highway 260 are in the fall, the months of October and November, particularly on Sunday and Monday evenings, and especially two hours after sunset. Now let's go back on the road again, north and west of Rim Country to Hoover Dam, where road engineers are in the middle of another highway improvement project. About 20 years ago, highway engineers realized that the road over Hoover Dam was going to be inadequate for the amount of traffic coming that way. So a new plan was devised that would replace the Hoover Dam Bridgeway. About 15 years ago, Stan Cunningham, um, another research biologist, uh, was in this area doing research on where the best place regarding sheep would be to uh, put this alternative route. Game and Fish started this project in about August of 1989 and we're trying to investigate the movements of bighorn sheep in and around this area. Well, the Bureau of Reclamation, who's sponsoring this project, also realized the, the importance of the desert bighorn sheep that live around this area. They contracted us, the Arizona Game and Fish Research Branch, to do a study on the bighorn sheep to try and determine the most important areas of movement and the most important areas for food, for water, and for shelter. Our job is to monitor them as much as possible to find these important areas. Throughout the 80s and 90s, about 10 sheep a year were killed on a single three-mile stretch of highway. When Stan Cunningham did his research out here, he estimated that there were probably 150 to 200 sheep in the northern four-mile stretch. I would estimate that that population is in half. The drought and other factors have affected the population as of late, so there's not as many crossings, but there still is the need to keep the highway permeable for sheep to cross, because they have, they, I see them cross here quite a bit. The Arizona Department of Transportation, working with the Federal Highway Administration, are building a bypass around the dam. They're converting a two-lane highway to a four-lane road. Combined with right-of-way fencing, sheep crossing would be virtually eliminated. You can see behind me the bypass. That's uh, the alternative that was chosen. All of the options crossed right through sheep habitat. The chosen route cuts through a good sheep lambing area on the northeast side of Sugarloaf Mountain. Sheep use this area seasonally. In the wintertime, they're lambing against the water along the edge of the cliff here by the uh, Colorado River. In the summertime, after the monsoons, they, they shift up into the rolling hills and, and feed on the greenery and the green up, and they come back daily. So a divided highway would stop all that movement and it would be a problem for sheep on the east versus the west side for genetic reasons. 
So the Game and Fish Department wanted to uh, make sure that when they build this highway, they mitigate for permeability of the highway so sheep can get across to breed and feed and whatnot. This is one of the mitigation features we have here. It's a you know, 600 foot long bridge, 100 feet high, and um, sheep have used it and continue to use it. They used it during construction, so um, that one appears to be functional. The department tracks the movement of the bighorn using special radio collars. In April 2004, we had collared 30 uh, desert bighorn sheep with uh, satellite GPS collars with spread spectrum and stormboard technology. Uh, the spread spectrum collars will get a location using GPS every seven hours and every two weeks I can go in a fixed wing aircraft and upload that data so we can make current maps every two weeks or a month or however often I want to fly but um, the storm boards will hold that data for the whole two years until these collars pop off and what we do with this data is we, we integrate it with the GIS and we build maps that tell us what the sheep are doing and where and when. Um, this collar data is essential for minute scale highway research that we're doing. Uh, we need to pinpoint these crossing areas and if I waited for just visual observation I, would, I wouldn't have enough data points to go, from, to go by so I think these collars are, are uh, very important to our project. With the elk on Highway 260, um, Norris and Jeff had found that the elk preferred not to have straight edge structures on their underpasses but for sheep that actually might be a benefit for them because they'd like to climb up and maybe walk on those platforms and look down over the, they might actually not use the middle as elk do, but climb the sides and cross on halfway up the side of the, uh, the underpass. And I've, we have, have pictures, still photos from trail masters that support that from Highway 68 to the south. Also the camera work that uh, the 260 project uses, um, we can't really use that here. There's nothing to hide these cameras and the cameras that Stan used got stolen. So we've been pretty much stuck with our color data and visuals. And sometimes the most efficient tracking method is very low tech. Simply scatter sand on the ground. What we have in front of me and behind me in two places are uh, track beds. Um, we use that as a tool to look at uh, use and, and crossing activity along the highway corridor. Uh, this is called Little Black Mesa. Sheep will be bound down by the river and use this mesa to cross towards feeding areas on the east side of the highway. They'll cross over this and leave their tracks in the sand and I can quantify that and uh, denote use and uh, crossing activity. Culverts don't seem to work well to sheep. Um, also guardrails impede crossing with sheep. They kind of run the length of the guardrail and go around the ends of the guardrail. What Game and Fish is looking for is either a, um, an overpass or an underpass big enough and open enough that sheep won't feel nervous crossing through it and wide enough if they go over a structure like an overpass that they probably won't be able to see the highway on either side. They'll just think it's a land bridge and continue across. They, um, sheep prefer to cross and so far with bighorn sheep there's very little, very little in the literature uh, about either underpasses or overpasses. So, uh, something this size shouldn't be an issue but I doubt ADOT want to build anything that big further down the highway. There's not a need for it. Another safety feature built into the road design are called out jumps. Behind me we have an out jump, and this is a mitigation feature uh, for, for public safety and for sheep safety. When sheep get caught in the right of way, on the inside of this uh, eight or nine foot fence, it's a way for the sheep to get out of the line of way of traffic. Um, they'll come down the fence line and jump out, but they're supposedly not be able to jump back in. We've had a, a, a young lamb on another one that actually jumped up the same height, so we're gonna have to heighten, we're gonna have to raise them up a little bit, maybe another foot or two. Um, I've got sand on the top and on the bottom to uh, measure the direction of the movement. So hopefully it's out instead of in, but um, there's probably five or six of these uh, structures um, throughout the study site so far, milepost zero to three. Predicting animal behavior is very difficult, but the engineers and biologists on both of these road projects are working constantly to modify these safe passages and make them more wildlife friendly. Avoiding collisions and conserving wildlife, it's a win-win situation for Arizona motorists.